Hey crew, it's Pitt, and I'm back with another Bible study. Today we are diving back into the book of Ezekiel. But before we begin, if you are unfamiliar with what is going on here, I hold some unconventional beliefs, and I'm holding an unconventional Bible study, and I suggest that you begin at the beginning because it is easier to keep up. With that being said, for those of you who have been tagging along, we are in Ezekiel 6 because we left off in Ezekiel 5. And we're dealing a lot with, with prophecy, we're dealing a lot with visions, and I gave a long, lengthy explanation on my view of that yesterday. If you missed that, you should definitely fall back and check that one out at least before proceeding. Let's dive into the text. And the word, of, and the word of the Lord came to me, saying, <clears throat> Son of man, set your face against the mountains of Israel and prophesy against them. You are to say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. This is what the Lord God says to the mountains and hills, to the ravines and valleys. I am about to bring a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will be demolished, and your incense altars will be smashed. And I will cast down your slain before your idols. I will lay the corpses of the Israelites before their idols and scatter your bones around your altars. Wherever you live, the cities will be laid waste and the high places will be demolished, so that your altars will be laid waste and desecrated. Your idols smashed and obliterated, your incense altars cut down, and your works blotted out. The slain will fall among you, and you will know that I am the Lord. Yet I will leave a remnant. For some of you will escape the sword when you are scattered among the nations and throughout the lands. Then, in the nations to which they have been carried captive, your survivors will remember me. How I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts that have turned away from me, and by their eyes that have lusted after idols. So they will loathe themselves for the evil they have done and for all their abominations, and they will know that I am the Lord. I did not declare in vain that I would bring this calamity upon them. This is what the Lord God says. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, and cry out, alas, because of all the wicked abominations of the house of Israel who will fall by the sword and famine and plague. He who is far off will die by the plague, and he who is near will fall by the sword, and he who remains will die by famine. So I will vent my fury upon them. Then you will know that I am the Lord, when their slain lie among the, their idols around their altars, on every high hill, on all the mountaintops, and under every green tree and leafy oak, the places where they offered fragrant incense to all their idols, I will stretch out my hand against them, and wherever they live, I will make the land a desolate waste. From the wilderness to Dibla, they will know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> this appears to me to be a call to repentance more than anything, right? It is a future judgment absolutely it is saying this is what i am currently wreaking upon israel right ezekiel is in captivity we did the geography yesterday he is in captivity in babylon he is way over by the river way over there right and so he is being carried to the spirit in jerusalem when he is there he is no longer there but these things are happening this is something that is going on to his people in real time he is talking to his people all the way through this. Now Ezekiel 7 begins the lamentation that we were told about yesterday. Yesterday we were told that there is a lamentation and you will use this as a lamentation. This is where it begins. We're about to go through it. Let's see what it's talking about. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, O son of man, this is what the Lord God says to the land of Israel. The end, the end has come upon the four corners of the land. The end is now upon you, and I will unleash my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways and repay you for all your abominations. I will not look on you with pity, nor will I spare you, but I will punish you for all your ways and, and for the abominations among you. Then you will know I am the Lord. This is what the Lord God says, disaster, an unprecedented disaster. Behold, it's coming. The end has come. The end has come. It has roused itself against you. Behold, it has come. Doom has come to you, O inhabitants 
of the land. The time has come. The day is near. There is panic on the mountains instead of shouts of joy. Very soon I will pour out my wrath upon you and vent my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways and repay you for all your abominations. I will not look on you with pity, nor will I spare you. But I will punish you for your ways and for the abominations among you. Then you will know that it is I, the Lord, who strikes the blow. Behold, the day is here. It has come. Doom has gone out. The rod is budded. Arrogance has bloomed. Their violence has grown into a rod to punish their wickedness. None of them will remain. None of their multitude, none of their wealth, and nothing of value. The time has come. The day has arrived. Let the buyer not rejoice, and the seller not mourn. For wrath is upon the whole multitude. The seller will surely not recover what he sold, while both remain alive. For the vision concerning the whole multitude will not be revoked, and because of their iniquity, not one of them will preserve his life. They have blown the trumpet and made everything ready, but no one goes to war. For my wrath is upon the whole multitude. The sword is outside, plague and famine are within. Those in the country will die by the sword, and those in the city will be devoured by famine and plague. The survivors will escape and live in the mountains, moaning like doves in the valley, each for his own iniquity. Every hand will go limp, and every knee will turn to water. They will put on sackcloth, and terror will overwhelm them. Shame will cover all their faces, and their, all their heads will be shaved. They will throw their silver in the streets, and their gold will seem unclean. Their silver and gold cannot save them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They cannot satisfy their appetites or fill their stomachs with wealth, for it became their stumbling block that brought their iniquity. His beautiful ornaments they transformed into pride and used them to fashion their vile images and detestable idols. Therefore, I will make these into something unclean for them, and I will hand these, over, these things over as plunder to, to foreigners and loot to the wicked of the earth who will defile them. I will turn my face away from them, and they will defile my treasured place. Violent men will enter it, and they will defile it. Forge the chain, for the land is full of the crimes of bloodshed, and the city is full of violence. So I will bring the most wicked of nations to take possession of their houses. I will end the pride of the mighty, and their holy places will be profaned. Anguish is coming. They will seek peace, but find none. Disaster upon disaster will come, and rumor after rumor. They will seek a vision from a prophet, but instruction from the priests will perish, as will counsel from the elders. The king will mourn, the prince will be clothed with despair, and the hands of the people of the land will tremble. I will deal with them according to their conduct, and I will judge them by their own standards. And then they will know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> Okay, so this lamentation, which we have been told is coming and is directly for present times, is, is for present times, right? This isn't even really a contestation, right? The only, like, it's not even quoted as somewhere else. If, if somewhere else it was implied that this was part of a prophecy, it would be right here. There would be blue writing and it would tell you that this is tied to this other chapter. Not always prophecy, but it is tied or mentioned or this is where it comes from. But there are things in here that people do take as being future prophecy. It's not, right? It is talking almost entirely, right? We can't ever say with 100% certainty on anything. So, but with 99.9%, .9%, we can say this is talking about then. This is talking about the trumpets of war, not the trumpets at the end times that, I, that uh, Isaiah talks about. Right? This is talking about now. Ezekiel is dealing with it now. Even his visions are dealing with it now. They're not dealing with the future. Right? Now, most of these things that people look at these prophecies, they see them and they're like, well, this applies to this and this because they have on a pair of glasses. And that pair of glasses tells them the outcome. Before they read the book, they have no idea what the book says before they actually know how it ends. And so... When you read it already knowing how it ends, you see things in it that may or may not be there. One of the ways that people see things that may or may not be there is in prophecy. Now, some prophecy is for in the future. Some prophecy is for in the now. 
this particular section, this lamentation, is prophecy for the now. He is telling them before it has happened that these destructive things are going to happen. Israel has been taken subject to Babylon. The king has been left in agreement, but a lot of <clears throat> a lot of exiles have been taken, including Ezekiel. Now, 13 years after their taking, there's a rebellion in Israel. They ally themselves with Egypt, and they decide that they're going to free themselves from Babylon, and that fails miserably. That's what this is talking about. That particular failure, miserably. When the king is dragged away in bronze chains with his eyes burned out, that's what it's talking about. That This whole section right here. So, don't get it twisted. Make sure you go back and read it. Don't use my discernment. Go back and read it, always. Go back and read it whenever you see one of these references to prophecy. We will be dealing with stuff like this a lot in the New Testament going to do that in a kind of a different way than I'm doing these, but we'll see this a lot, where there are absolutely some of the prophecies that fit, but there are a lot of them that have been made to fit, and we will be dissecting them piece by piece. I'm not taking away from the prophecies that actually fit, but the things that we read into them that are extra, I'm trying to take away from. This is dealing with current times, prophet time. <clears throat> Pretty much all of Ezekiel is, really. In the sixth year, on the fifth day of the sixth month, I was sitting in my house, and, and the elders of Judah were sitting before me, and there was, and there the hand of the Lord fell upon me. And then I looked and saw a figure like that of a man. From his waist down, his appearance was like fire, and from his waist up he was bright as the gleam of amber. He stretched out what looked like a hand and took me by the hair of my head. And then the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and heaven and carried me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the north gate of the inner court, where the idol that provokes jealousy was seated. And there I saw the glory of the God of Israel, like the vision I had seen in the plain. Son of man, he said to me, now lift your eyes to the north, so I lifted up my eyes to the north, and in the entrance north of the altar gate, I saw the idol of his jealousy, the abomination of desolation. Son of man, he said, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations, <clears throat> the great abominations that the house of Israel is committing to drive me far from my sanctuary. Yet you will see even greater abominations. And then he brought me to the entrance of the court, and I looked and saw a hole in the wall. Son of man, he told me, dig through the wall. And so I dug through the wall and discovered a doorway. And then he said to me, go in and see the wicked abominations they are committing here. So I went in and looked and engraved all around the wall was every kind of live crawling creature and detestable beast, along with all the idols of the house of Israel. Before them stood seventy elders of the house of Israel, with Yazaniah, son of Shaphan, standing among them, and each had a censer in his hand, and a fragrant cloud of incense was rising. Son of man, he said to me, do you see what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness, each at the shrine of his own idol? For they are saying, The Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Again, he told me, you will see them committing even greater abominations. And then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord. And I saw women sitting there, weeping for Tammuz. Son of man, he said to me, do you see this? Yet you will see even greater abominations than these. And here's a good worthy place to stop because... Tammuz is not mentioned all that often, but he is mentioned. And here specifically is it mentioned as an abomination sitting outside the temple of the Lord. Y'all know who Tammuz is? Tammuz is a month in the Hebrew calendar. Of it. That's a thing. But it is also Demuzid. Demuzid was a Sumerian god of death and rebirth.
that's an abomination. This this god of death and rebirth. Now it's the god of springtime, right? Now it's the god of the consort of a uh, Ishtar. And if you don't know, Ishtar, Esther, and Easter are all the same. They all happen in the spring. There is a renewal process. There is a, a rebirthing process. This is a, a myth as old as time. And there have been various personifications of this. Ra was one. Tammuz was one. We'll be dealing with one in the New Testament. And it is important to remember that here in Ezekiel, in the Old Testament, that this God of death and renewal and rebirth, conquering the grave, that's an abomination to God sitting outside of the temple. I know that that just stepped on some toes. And I'm sorry if your toes are stepped on. I really am. I don't mean to step on them. But there are some hard truths to be learned while we go through this Bible study. You, this, is, this is the wiki, right? You can Google search to moves. And it will bring you here. And it tells you what you need to know in the wiki. So we're not going to break down the wiki. Wiki is a good place to start, but it is not a reliable source for pretty much anything. Some historical things are okay, but you should always independently verify through the sources listed. Check and see if it's correct. You will see them committing even greater abominations. And then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord, and I saw women sitting there weeping for Tammuz. Son of man, do you see this? Yet you will see even greater abominations than these. And so he brought me to the inner court of the house of the Lord, and there, at the entrance to the temple of the Lord, between the portico and the altar, were about twenty-five men, with their backs to the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east. And they were bowing to the east in worship of the sun. Son of man, he said to me, do you see this? Is it not enough for the house of Judah to commit the abominations they are practicing here, that they must also fill the land with violence and continually provoke me to anger? Look, they are even putting the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will respond with wrath. I will not look on them with pity, nor will I spare them. Although they shout loudly in my ears, I will not listen to them. And then I heard him call out in a loud voice, saying, Draw near, O executioners of the city, each with a weapon of destruction in hand. And I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a weapon of slaughter in his hand. With them was another man clothed in linen who had a writing kit at his side, and they came in and stood beside the bronze altar. And then the glory of the God of Israel rose from above the cherubim where it had been, and it moved to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side. Go throughout the city of Jerusalem, said the Lord, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men sighing and groaning over all the abominations committed here. And as I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and start killing. Do not show pity or spare anyone. Slaughter the old men, the young men, and the maidens, the women and the children, but do not go near anyone who has the mark. Now, begin at my sanctuary. And so they began with the elders who were before the temple. And then he told them, Defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. So they went out and began killing throughout the city. And while they were killing, I was left alone, and I fell face down and cried out, O oh Lord God, when you pour out your wrath on Jerusalem, will you destroy the entire remnant of Israel? He replied, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of bloodshed, and the city is full of perversity. For they say, the Lord has forsaken the land, and the Lord does not see. But as for me, I will not look on them with pity, nor will I spare them. I will bring their deeds down 
upon their own heads. And then the man clothed in linen with the writing kit at his side reported back, I have done as you commanded. And I looked and saw above the expanse, above the heads of the cherubim, a likeness of a throne of sapphire. And the Lord said to the man clothed in linen, Go inside the wheelwork beneath the cherubim. Fill your hands with burning coals from among the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And as I watched, he went in. Now, when the man went in, the cherubim were standing on the south side of the temple, and a cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord rose from above the cherubim and stood over the, over the threshold of the temple. The temple was filled with the cloud, and the court was filled with the brightness and the glory of the Lord. The sounds of the wings of the cherubim could be heard as far as the outer court, like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. And when the Lord commanded the man in clothed in linen, saying, Take fire from within the wheelwork from among the cherubim, the man went in and stood beside a wheel. Then one of the cherubim reached out his hand and took some of the fire that was among them, and he put it into the hands of the man clothed in linen, who received it and went out. The cherubim appeared to have the form of human hands under their wings. Then I looked and saw four wheels beside the cherubim, one wheel besides each cherub. And the wheels gleamed like a barrel stone. As for their appearance, all four had the same form, like a wheel within a wheel. When they moved, they would go in any of the four directions without turning as they moved. For, sorry, wherever the head faced, the cherubim would go in that direction without turning as they moved. Their entire bodies, including their backs, hands, and wings, were full of eyes all around as were the four wheels. I heard the wheels being called the whirling wheels. <clears throat> Each of the cherubim had four faces. The first face was like that of a cherub, the second like that of a man, the third like that of a lion, and the fourth like that of an eagle. And then the cherubim rose those upward. These were the living creatures I had seen by the river Kabar. When the cherubim moved, the wheels moved beside them, and even when they spread their wings to rise from the ground, the wheels did not veer away from their side. When the cherubim stood still, the wheels also stood still, and when they ascended, the wheels ascended with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. And then the glory of the Lord moved away from the threshold of the temple and stood above the cherubim. As I watched, the cherubim lifted their wings and rose up from the ground, with the wheels beside them as they went. And they stopped at the entrance of the east gate of the house of the Lord and the glory of the God of Israel above them. These were the living creatures I had seen beneath the God of Israel by the river Kabar, and I knew that they were cherubim. Each had four faces and four wings, and what looked like human hands under their wings, their faces looked like the faces I had seen by the river Kabar. Each creature went straight ahead. <clears throat> Then the Spirit lifted me and brought me to the gate of the house of the Lord that faces east. And there at the entrance of the gate were twenty-five men. Among them I saw Jazaniah, son of Azor, and Pelatiah, son of Benaniah, who were leaders of the people. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, these are the men who plot evil and give wicked counsel in this city. They are saying, Is not the time near to build houses? The city is a cooking pot, and we are the meat. Therefore... Prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and told me to declare that this is what the Lord says. That that is what you are thinking, O house of Israel, and I know the thoughts that arise in your mind. You have multiplied those you killed in this city and filled its streets with the dead. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. The slain you have laid within this city are the meat, and the city as the pot, but I will remove you from it. Do you fear the sword? So I will bring the sword against you, declares the Lord God. I will bring you out of the city and deliver you into the hands of foreigners. I will execute judgments against you. You will fall by the sword, and I will judge you even to the borders of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. The city will be a pot for you, nor will you be meat within it. The city will not be a pot for you, nor will you be the meat within it. I will judge you even to the borders of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord, for you have neither followed my statutes nor practiced my ordinances, but you have conformed to the 
the ordinances of the nations around you. Now, as I was prophesying, Pelatiah, son of Benaniah, died. Then I fell face down and cried out in a loud voice, O oh Lord God, will you bring the remnant of Israel to a complete end? And then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, your brothers, your relatives, your fellow exiles, and the whole house of Israel, all those of whom the people of Jerusalem have said, They are far away from the Lord. This land has been given to us as a possession. Therefore declare that this is what the Lord God says. Although I sent them far away among the nations and scattered them among the countries, yet for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries to which they have gone. Therefore declare that this is what the Lord God says. I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you from the countries to which you have been scattered. I will give you back the land of Israel. When they return to it, they will remove all its detestable things and all its abominations, and I will give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh, so that they may keep follow my statutes, keep my ordinances, and practice them. Then they will be my people, and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts pursue detestable things and abominations, I will bring their conduct down upon their own heads, declares the Lord God. Then the cherubim, with the wheels beside them, spread their wings, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. And the glory of the Lord rose up from within the city, and stood over the mountains east of the city. And the Spirit lifted me up, and carried me back to Chaldea, to the exiles in the vision given by the Spirit of God. And after the vision had gone up from me, I told the exiles everything the Lord had showed me. <clears throat> okay, so that was a long section. We don't know, like, I normally don't read that long without at least trying to stop and say something, but this was all dealing with exactly the same thing. This was all Ezekiel seeing the future judgments coming upon Jerusalem as they would happen. And they do. They all happen in real time. They all happen in live time. And they all deal directly with current time now, you can take that and run with it if you want to have multiple fulfillments it can it doesn't necessarily have to but it is possible that there are multiple fulfillments to prophecy i don't discount that i don't discredit that but if it is true it has to fit all of it right it doesn't get to pick and choose parts of it to fulfill either it is fulfilled and it is the word of god or it is not and it is not then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, you are living in a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, son of man, pack your bags for exile. In broad daylight, set out from your place and go to another as they watch. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious house. Bring out your baggage for exile by day, as they watch. Then in the evening, as they watch, go out like those who go into exile. As they watch, dig through the wall and carry your belongings out through it. And as they watch, lift your sign, your, lift your bags to your shoulder and take them out at dusk. Cover your face so that you cannot see the land, for I have made you a sign to the house of Israel. So I did as I was commanded. I brought out my bags for exile by day, and in the evening I dug through the wall by hand. I took out my belongings out at dusk and carrying them on my shoulder as they watched. And in the morning, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, hasn't the rebellious house of Israel asked you what you are doing? What are you doing? Tell them that this is what the Lord of God says. The burden, this burden concerns the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel who are there. You are to say, I am assigned to you just as it happened here. So it will be done to them. They will go into exile as captives, and at dusk the prince among them will lift his bags to his shoulder and go out. They would dig through the wall to bring him out. He will cover his face so he cannot see the land. But I will spread my net over him, and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, the land of the Chaldeans, yet he will not see it, and there he will die. And I will scatter to every wind all the attendants around him and all his troops, and I will draw a sword to chase after them. And they will know that I am the Lord when I disperse them among the, among the nations and scatter them throughout the countries. 
but I will spare a few of them from sword and famine and plague, so that in the nations to which they go they can recount all their abominations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat your bread with trembling, and drink your water with quivering and anxiety. Then tell the people of the land that this is what the Lord God says about those living in Jerusalem and in the land of Israel. They will eat their bread with anxiety and drink their water in dread, for their land will be stripped of everything in it and because of the violence of all who dwell in it. The inhabited cities will be laid waste and the land will become desolate. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, what is this proverb that you have in the land of Israel? The days go by and every vision fails. Therefore tell them, this is what the Lord God says, I will put an end to this proverb, and in Israel they will no longer recite it. But say to them, the days are at hand when every vision will be fulfilled, for there will be no more false visions or fluttering divinations within the house of Israel, because I, the Lord, will speak whatever word I speak, and it will be fulfilled without delay. For in your days, O rebellious house, I will speak a message and bring it to pass, declares the Lord God. Furthermore, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take note that the house of Israel is saying, The vision that he sees is for many years from now. He prophesies about the distant future. Therefore tell them that this is what the Lord God says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. The message I speak will be fulfilled, declares the Lord. Again, this is the reiteration, right? This is saying, hey, this is dealing with us right now. Absolutely, without a doubt. I am bringing this to you. Now, this, in particular, was talking about Jehoiakim. And he leaves through the gate and tries to flee, and they chase him down and kill him. That's what this is talking about. <clears throat> and then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are now prophesying. Tell those who prophesy out of their own imaginations. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says. Woe to the foolish prophet who follow their own spirit, yet have seen nothing. Your prophets, O Israel, are like foxes among the ruins. You did not go up to the gaps or restore the wall around the house of Israel so that it would stand in the battle on the day of the Lord. They see false visions and speak lying divinations. They claim... Thus declares the Lord, when the Lord did not send them, yet they wait for the fulfillment of the message. Haven't you seen a false vision and spoken a lying divination when you proclaim, Thus declares the Lord, even though I have not spoken? Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. Because you have uttered vain words and seen false visions, I am against you, declares the Lord God. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and speak lying divinations. They will not belong to the council of my people or be recorded in the register of the house of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord God, because they have led my people astray, saying, Peace, when there is no peace, and whitewashing any flimsy wall that is built. Tell those whitewashing the wall that it will fall. Rain will come in torrents. I will send hailstones plunging down, and a windstorm will burst forth. Surely when the wall has fallen, you will not be asked, Where is the whitewash with which you covered it? Therefore, this is what the Lord God says, In my wrath I will release a windstorm, and in my anger torrents of rain and hail will fall with destructive fury. I will tear down the wall you whitewashed and level it to the ground, so that its foundation is exposed. The city will fall, and you will be destroyed within it. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And after I have vented my wrath against the wall and against all those who whitewashed it, I will say to you, The wall is gone, and so are those who whitewashed it. The prophets of Israel, who prophesied to Jerusalem, and saw a vision of peace for her when there was no peace, declares the Lord God. Now, O son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people, who prophesy out of their own imagination. Prophesy against them, and tell them that this is what the Lord God says. Woe to the women who sew magic charms on their wrists and make veils for the head of people of every height, in order to ensnare their souls. 
Will you ensnare the souls of my people, but preserve your own? You have profaned me among my people for handfuls of barley and scraps of bread. But lying to my people who would listen, you have killed those who should not have died and spared those who should not have lived. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. See, I am against the magic charms with which you ensnare souls like birds, and I will tear them from your arms. So I will free the souls you have ensnared like birds. I will also tear off your veils and deliver my people from your hands so that they will no longer be prey in your hand. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Because you have disheartened the righteous with your lies, even though I have caused them no grief, and because you have encouraged the wicked not to turn from their evil ways to save their lives, therefore you will no longer see false visions or practice divination. I will deliver my people from your hands. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Again, we're just dealing with very specific prophecies against current prophet time people. Then some of the elders came and sat down before me. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I consult with them in any way? Therefore, speak to them and tell them that this is what the Lord God says. When any Israelite sets up idols in his heart and puts up a wicked stumbling block before his face and then comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him according to his great idolatry so that I may take hold of the hearts of the people of Israel. For because of their idols, they are all estranged from me. Therefore, Tell the house of Israel that this is what the Lord God says. Repent and turn away from your idols. Turn your faces away from all your abominations. For when in any Israelite or any foreigner dwelling in Israel separates himself from me, sets up idols in his heart, and puts up a wicked stumbling block before his face, then comes to the prophet to inquire of me, I, the Lord, will answer him myself. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb. I will cut him off from among my people. Then you will know that I am the Lord. But if the prophet is enticed to speak a message, then it was I, the Lord, who enticed him. And I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people, Israel. They will bear their punishment. The punishment of the inquirer will be the same as that of the prophet in order that the house of Israel may no longer stray from me and no longer defile themselves with all their transgressions. Then they will be my people, and I will be their God, declares the Lord God. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, if a land sins against me by acting unfaithfully, and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its supply of food or to send famine upon it, and to cut it off from both man and beast, then even if these three men Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. Their righteousness could only deliver themselves, declares the Lord God. Or if I send wild beasts through the land to leave it childless and desolate, with no man passing through it for fear of the beast, then as surely as I live, declares the Lord God, even if these three men were in it, they could not deliver their own sons or daughters. They alone would be delivered, but the land would be desolate. Or if I bring a sword against that land and say, Let a sword pass through it, so that I cut off from it both man and beast, then as surely as I live, declares the Lord God, even if these three men were in it, they could not deliver their own sons or daughters. They alone would be delivered. Or if I send a plague into that land and pour out my wrath upon it through bloodshed, cutting off from it both man and beast, then as surely as I live, declares the Lord God, even if Noah... Daniel and Job were in it. They could not deliver their own sons or daughters. Their righteousness could only deliver themselves. For this is what the Lord God says. How much worse will it be when I send against Jerusalem my four dire judgments, sword, famine, wild beasts, and plague, in order to cut it off from both man and beast? Yet behold, some survivors will be left in it, sons and daughters who will be brought out. They will come out to you, and when you see their conduct and actions, you will be comforted regarding the disaster I have brought upon Jerusalem. 
all that I have brought upon it. They will bring you consolation when you see their conduct and actions, and you will know that it was not without cause that I have done all of these things within it, declares the Lord. <clears throat> okay, now this one. Oh, this is a call to, to repentance, right? When any Israelite sets up idols in his heart and puts a stumbling block before his face and then comes to the prophet, the Lord will answer him according to his idolatry. Tell the house of Israel that this is what the Lord says. Repent and turn away from your idols. Turn your faces from abominations. Call to repentance. When any Israelite or any foreigner dwelling in Israel separates himself from me and sets up idols in his hearts and puts a wicked stumbling block before his face and, and then comes to the prophet, the Lord will answer him about his idolatry. This, this, this is, this is an important part to know, right? The four dire judgments. This is something that is coming and has been promised directly to Israel right now, but we can look forward ahead. Now, I am not saying that there is fulfillment in the future to those things, but these four spots right here, um, you have sword, plague, famine, and wild beasts, right? These four right here. The riders on the horsemen of the apocalypse in the book of Revelation are war, famine, sickness, and some other kind of death, right? The correlation is here to be drawn later. I don't know if it is even directly... It's in Corinthians and Romans, but it is not. So this part is not noticed. Noah, Daniel, and Job. These are the three righteous men, right? The ones that were not taken away. Elijah was scooped up. Elisha, not so righteous. But Noah was righteous in all his generations. Daniel served faithfully even through the fire. And Job was called righteous by God himself. Right? And even these three men can't save anybody else. They can only save themselves by their commitment to God. By their asking for forgiveness by seeking his face and trying to do his will all three of them we have talked about two of them already we'll get to daniel shortly but it's important to note that these were all probably allegories now noah almost certainly was taken from the sumerian right ham Sh ham shem and japheth are the names of the Sumerian Ark survivors, right? It, 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 it's there to be seen. Job is poetry talking about the shift from God only blessing certain people to uh, God neither blesses nor, nor punishes except according to his will, not according to your deeds. Job was really a turning point in how religion was seen, but it is most likely just an allegory. It is most likely just a known story that it grew. Same with Noah. The same with Daniel. Now, there is some historical significance that can be attached to Daniel, but it is very likely that he was just some type of a amalgamation himself and that the whole book of Daniel is probably... Not, not necessarily fully, right? But probably attributed to Daniel because of the mentions here. Noah, Daniel, and Job. There's no way to know definitively. I'm not trying to step on any toes with this. This is just some information that is not normally relayed. There is a possibility that all three of these men lived, died, breathed, had children, did all of the things that humans do. But there is also the possibility that they are entirely literary constructs. That's not even that controversial of a take. It's really not. Unless you're just fundamentally incontrovertible, most people commonly accept that those three people are more than likely just a combination of allegory. Um. But even then, it is telling you that you are only responsible for yourself. You can only save yourself, and no one else's sins are going to condemn you. The sins of the Father are not going to condemn you to, to be condemned or 
they're not going to save you either. Nobody else's actions can save you. You are responsible for your responsibility to God, for your forgiveness to going to Him for the forgiveness of your sins. You are directly responsible for that. Uh, was there anything else in there that we really needed to cover? Uh, I don't think so. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. We will be coming back into Ezekiel 15, but this is a good pretty good stopping point we're getting a little bit long on time hopefully i brought a little bit of enlightenment and not too much confusion to a somewhat complicated topic there are people who will read prophecy into anything every single time the stock market goes up there's somebody talking about the mark of the beast and every single time that the stock market goes down there's somebody talking about the end of the financial system it happens People are prone to overreact. They are prone to the drama. They want it. And so it is quite often that we read into these books things that it does not say. It doesn't say anything about the end times in here. Now, the one point I pointed out, the correlation that John the Revelator pulls in of these four B, the, the, these four horsemen who bring the four different kinds of judgment I did that intentionally, but not as though Ezekiel is talking about the end times. Because I don't, again, don't feel like he is talking about anything unrelated to his current times. His vision was dealing directly with Jerusalem. It even tells you that. And the, all of the calls and the, the prophecy that he is doing, while it can be referenced later, isn't for later. It is direct, directly dealing with what the judgment that is coming at the 13th year, right? Whenever the rebellion happens and the king is punished, this is directly talking about that. It is fulfilled. It is done. Now, you can look at these things and you can put your own tilt on them. You can say that, oh, no, that absolutely has to refer to this because I believe that this is going to happen. That's on you. I don't read that here. If you do, that's cool. You don't have to agree with me. I'm merely sharing what I have to share. I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to talk to you, to, to tell you what I think and why I think it. Hopefully, that doesn't confuse too many people. Because the simple truth of the matter is, is that all you have to do is turn to God, and God will forgive you for everything. All you have to do is go to Him and say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner, and I ask you to forgive my sins. I freely accept the grace that you freely extend to me, and I ask you to change my life. And if you said that, or anything even resembling that, and you meant it, and you allow it to happen, then it will happen. God will change your soul. He will, he will write his law on your heart. You will hear the voice in your head telling you what you need to do or not. You have to listen to it. You have to develop spiritual discipline. You have to pray. You have to meditate. You have to fast. And that's not because you have to, but because it is beneficial to you. Prayer, meditation, and fasting are the most beneficial things that you can do for yourself. It is right up there with taking a bath and eating every day. <laughs> All of these things are, are good for you. I'm not telling you it's a law that you're going to go to hell. That's not what it's about. It's about finding your path and your course and what God has intended for you to do. And he has not intended for you to be on the path to destruction. All of the addictions are paths to destruction. Every single one of them. That's why he tries to pull you off of them. It's not because he doesn't want you to drink. It's because he doesn't want you to be a drunk. It's doesn't, not because he doesn't want you to be happy. It's because he doesn't want you to be stupid. And so the law is written for you to keep yourself in line. He doesn't care if you have a drink every now. He doesn't care if you cuss. Like, you shouldn't be cussing everybody. You should be acting out in anger at anybody. But when those things happen, it's not the end of the world. Slip-ups happen. That is part of the experience, the learning process that we are here for. We are here to live and learn and grow and to choose God at every possible chance. To consciously learn to make that choice. That is why we are here. You're not here to sit on your ass and watch some Netflix. That's fun. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's not your purpose. To the crew. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate every single minute that you are here with me. And I am praying for you every single day. Till next time, I love you. God loves you. You are perfect, whole, and complete just the way that you are. And this has been Fit State. Peace.